Nibali lost his bite a little, hasn't he, this season? We'll see how he gets on in his final four race days. This is what the riders are taking on today, 195 kilometres, leaving Lissone, heading out to a couple of different circuits. They'll take on uh, Sirtori first time, and then head out towards Albiate, not too far from a couple of the Great Lakes, and then that four times around the Lissolo circuit. Lissolo, the biggest and most difficult climb in terms of gradient on the circuit, around 2.5 k's and almost 8%. In the circuit, you've got the Sirtori, Colle Brianza, and then Lisolo. And after four laps of that, 35 kilometers will remain, and the riders will head back to Lisone for a finish on the flat. But we've seen in the last few years, that given the elevation, given the climbs, it's not exactly a sprinter's race, this one. And as the flag was waved, 11.26 on Via Catalani. The riders were off. Still waiting for a time gap to the next group. We've got 13 seconds here. Wait to make sure that that is what's left of the peloton. Indeed, it looks like it. But again, this is a one-day race. We've seen images. We haven't seen live images from out on the course, but we've seen a few images from the finish line. And... The most thing I've seen have been riders riding back to the team buses. So once they are dropped on these circuits, <laughs> it's back to the buses and thinking about the next race. But you can see not a massive gap here, and maybe one of the reasons why not everybody's committing. Now then, 50 kilometers to go. Five seconds, that's all. It's all going to come back together towards the bottom here, but we start climbing very soon again. At the bottom of this descent, it'll be time for Colibrianza. That's 3.1 kilometers, 6.7% an average gradient. And Domenico Pozzo Vivo there. Piccolo left hand side in the pink jersey. Little group with Pozzo Vivo and Formolo off the back here, trying to hold on. Dylan turns. And coming back now for UA Emirates, Alessandro Corvi bringing with him Mark Hirschi. But look at Pozzo Vivo here. Second part of the climb, a steeper part, but it's very short this. They're not far from going over the top for the final time. But Pozzo Vivo's doing the damage and Formolo gritting his teeth and trying to hold on. And there's going to be contact, so they have got across this gap. We're wondering where they were. And that would mean now a 20-second gap, roughly, from these five back. Important that they get organised quickly and continue to ride here, Magnus. So, Marik Mas in this group for Movistar had a brilliant Welt d'Espagne, didn't he? But, of course, with Emric Mas, down the years, the problem has been converting good placings into wins. Yeah, that's, that's a fair point. Enrique Mas had that brilliant Vuelta España, but uh, he's never won a, a stage race in Europe. In terms of one-day racing, rather like Domenico Pozzo Vivo, who we mentioned, has not managed to take a victory ever. Now, here's Nibali. Oh, hello. It's not a big group, though, is it? Sea riders up the front. Now, this is the head of the race. So they've made it across, too. Mm. And they've brought Uran, Nibali, and company with them. Now, attacks from the front. Looks like Yates have been in there as well. And Pots of Evil with Nibali sits on weights. Four and a half kilometers to the line now. Alberde and Bax. Fascinating, this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now they move from Formolo, and he's being followed by Enric Mas. That's clever from Formolo, using the road, using the traffic islands. Mas followed him, though. You could just see that there was one of the two riders from EF marking him. Just a reminder as well, the final straight is almost 1.8 kilometers long. 
absolutely yeah. arrow straight inside the final kilometer now Embrick mass is keeping this quick it looks as though Movi star want to go with a sprint and look at backs moving up Valverde sitting fourth wheel in terms of going down the years he's the favorite but he's 42 here it's been a while since he won February in fact now Guillaume Martin moves up on the right in the red jersey as well mass is trying to keep it fast we're into the last half a K now and you can see the finish line up ahead who moves and when a reminder that the more climby types he will have to move quickly looking for the surprise backs on the left but it is Valverde who's going to launch it early there is Valverde now 250 meters to go and he has it at the front Mass has done his job can Valverde continue to the line it's going to be a big ask as now backs goes through the middle it is shoot back for Valverde on the left hand side Valverde is holding but backs coming up backs coming up and here he goes what a win that is Short backs in esteemed company arrives on the scene. He's beaten Balverde, he's beaten Nibali, he's beaten Grand Tour stage winners and monument victors. Short backs is here, but today he did just that. 42 year old great Alejandro Balverde leading this one out, Magnus. And look at backs come around. He came from quite a long way back, he was without doubt the fastest. Yeah, without a doubt, uh, and he, he, he sort of got that because he got held up a little bit in the in the initial part of his sprint. He, um, I think that the, he ended up actually sprinting for the for the perfect distance, and um, he was clearly the fastest. So it's your backs from Alejandro Valverde. Third place looked to go to Rigoberto Urán. Fourth went to Davide Formolo, but behind you got Vincenzo Nibali, Domenico Pozzo Vivo, Andrea Piccolo. What a group has Guillaume Martin coming in as well off that little wheel where he'd been hiding. I think it was the wheel of, of Piccolo. In fact, it is Piccolo and not Uran, pardon me. Who's